Helicopters are used all over the world for transporting passengers. But the most important use for them is rescuing people from areas that are difficult to get to by land. I'm here at Her Majesty's Coast Guard base in North Wales to meet an amazing rescue helicopter and her crew. The helicopter behind me is used to rescue people in need from the sea or from the mountains. If someone hurts themselves on top of a mountain, it's impossible to get an ambulance up there, so the Coast Guard's called. A rescue can come any time of day or the middle of the night, and it sounds as if the crew have a rescue call coming in now. They all spring to action at once. First, they look at a map of the area to check for any dangers and work out the best route. Just look at this amazing tractor pulling the helicopter out of the hangar. Now it's time for the crew to put their special safety gear on. Everything has a purpose. This life-saving jacket will inflate so that the crew member floats in water. And it even has its own air supply, just in case they find themselves underwater and need to breathe fresh air. Then, it's out to the helicopter to fly. On board are pilot Mike, Captain Kate, John the winch operator, and Tomo the winch man. It's Tomo's job to get lowered out of the helicopter to rescue someone on the ground. After a few safety checks, it's time for takeoff. This whole process, from call to flight, takes the crew under 15 minutes. Engine start. Look at how fast those rotors can turn. The rotors chop through the air and make everything around them very windy. Whoa, I can hardly stay on my feet. Red Mechanical. Let's use your super slow motion camera to see just how many times those rotors are turning. I love using Gecko Super Slow Mo, mainly because it just looks cool. But look, a helicopter's rotor blades can spin 10 times per second. Oh dear, are you okay, Red Mechanical? As the rotors spin faster, the helicopter lifts off the ground and flies into the air. Captain Kate controls the helicopter by pointing the rotor blades in the direction she wants the helicopter to fly. Today the crew are practicing their winching skills using a dummy instead of a real person. The pilot skillfully hover over the area just above where the dummy is. Tomo clips himself to the winch and John carefully lowers him down. Tomo would then check how poorly the person on the ground is before winching both of them back up to the helicopter safely. Nicely done team! Back at base the engineers are always on hand to make sure the helicopters are in the best working order and ready to fly. Safety is the most important thing and these engineers are the best in the business. It's a real team effort keeping these amazing helicopters flying and rescuing people in need. This is Tom and Kev. Tom's a pilot and Kev is a winch operator. They're going to give us a quick tour inside the helicopter. Welcome everyone to the S92 Search and Rescue Helicopter. First and foremost, very importantly, we've got two large winches here. And these winches have got two straps. And the idea of this is we can lower these down to people in the water or on a mountain and pick them up and take them to safety. So let's look inside now in the aircraft itself. 
And as you can see, as you come into this helicopter, it's a large space. Here we've got a camera which we use when we're searching for people. This can pick up people on the water, on the mountainside. So when we've picked up our patient, which we've taken off the hoist, we bring them into, into the aircraft itself and we can put them onto this, our stretcher. And they may well be in the stretcher, but this is a lovely area for us to work on them and make them feel comfortable in the aircraft and we can give them medical treatment if they require it. Once we get to the hospital, we need to get our patient out of the aircraft safely and the best way we can do that is we lead them and lift them off here down through the ramp itself off the aircraft into the hospital where they can be looked after. Okay this is the cockpit of the helicopter there are two pilots one sits here in this chair and the other one sits on the other side these are the controls to fly the helicopter this one moves the helicopter forwards and backwards and this one moves it up and down and then there's two pedals down on the floor as well and that keeps the helicopter straight. We've got two engines and they're controlled on these screens and then we've got a map in the middle to see where we're going. Thanks very much to the amazing team here at the Coast Guard base. Bye! Hello everyone! Whoa! Look at this amazing red fire truck! This beautiful vehicle has everything that a fire truck should have. Lights, a siren, seats for the crew, a hose for putting out fires and a ladder. But this fire truck is hiding a very special secret. It's also an amazing pizza making truck with a wood fired oven inside. This is Ben. He bought this old fire truck and spent a long time transforming it into the amazing pizza making vehicle it is today. Hello Gecko. Hello Ben. We need to get some cheese for our pizzas. Do you fancy a ride in the fire engine? Yes, please. This fire truck is over 60 years old. Brave firefighters would drive in this special vehicle to go and put out fires. Things worked a little differently 60 years ago in fire trucks. Look, instead of pressing a button for the siren to make a noise, Ben has to wind this lever like this. Here we are at the cheese factory to pick up some special mozzarella cheese. Hi Ben. Hi Hi Gecko. Here's mozzarella. Fantastic, thank you very much. Right Gecko, let's go make some pizzas. There's lots of things that go into making the perfect pizza, but one of them is heat. A really hot oven is what's needed, and luckily, Ben has a special wood burning oven which uses real fire. Ben starts off with small sticks called kindling to get the fire started, before adding larger logs to make the fire bigger. Ben then safely pushes the burning logs to the back of the oven to make space for all those yummy pizzas to go in. Remember, fire is very hot and extremely dangerous, so only grown-ups should ever go near it. It takes a little while for the oven to get really hot, so Ben sets up the rest of the pizza stall. And here come some helpers to make lots of pizzas. Hi Gecko! Hello everyone, let's get pizza making. Pizzas were invented in Italy. And to make pizza dough, all you need is flour, water, yeast and salt. Ben's already got some dough that he made last night. 
and now he's busy stretching and shaping it into pizza bases. Once the pizza base is nice and thin, Ben adds some tasty red tomato sauce and the special mozzarella cheese. Then you can put whatever topping you like on your pizza. Yum! The wooden board that the pizza is sitting on is called a paddle. And Ben can now move the pizza towards the scorching hot oven. Put it inside and then slide the pizza off with a shake. The pizza sits right on the floor of the oven where it's super hot. Over 300 degrees to be precise. Luckily, you don't have to wait long for this yummy pizza to be ready, as it only takes a minute. Wow, that looks delicious. Everyone's joining in with the pizza making. Great job, guys! Everyone's doing such an amazing job of making and eating pizzas. It's making me hungry. Hey, Gecko, we made a special pizza just for you. Oh, thank you very much. This pizza is absolutely delicious. I'm really full now, but what an amazing day we've had. Thanks very much to Ben for showing us around his wood-fired pizza engine. And thanks to all you helpers. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! Some of my mechanical friends are trying to get back to Gecko's garage today. So I think we should go and pick them up on this amazing Arriva bus. Buses are fantastic vehicles. They carry lots of passengers around town and take people to places they need to go. Buses have lots of space inside to fit as many people on as possible. What shape is this bus? Yes, it's a rectangle. Look how many seats are in here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 seats! Wow! And when the seats are full, there's even places for people to stand. Look, you can hold on to these handrails and these grab handles too to make sure you don't fall over when the bus stops. This is Mary and she's the driver of this bus. Mary's just going round the bus to do all of her safety checks before going out on the road. What shape are the wheels on the bus? Yes, they're a circle. This bus is special because it runs on electricity. That means it doesn't have to be filled with petrol or diesel. But instead, it can be plugged in and charged. It's got a big battery that stores all of the electricity up on the roof. Hi Gecko, do you want to come and see where I drive my bus? Yes please! Mary sits in a place called the cab and to get into the driving seat she opens this door and climbs inside. Mary can then press this button to open and close the electric doors. There's lots of other buttons and controls for Mary to press in here too. To start the bus Mary presses this button. 
I think it's time we went and picked up the mechanicals. Mary, can I buy a ticket, please? To buy a ticket, passengers give the correct money to the driver and she prints them a ticket. Mary can change the sign on the front to tell people where the bus is going. Hooray! We're off to my garage. Don't worry, mechanicals. We're coming for you. The bell on the bus goes ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. The bell on the bus goes ding, ding, ding. All day long. The lights on the bus go flash, flash, flash. Flash, flash, flash. Flash, flash, flash. The lights on the bus go flash, flash, flash. All day long. The tickets on the bus go print, print, print. Print, print, print. Print, print, print. The tickets on the bus go print, print, print. All day long. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish. Swish, swish, swish. Swish, swish, swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish. All day long. Oh, hey there. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep. All day long. Oh, ho. The doors on the bus go open and close. Open and close. Open and close. The doors on the bus go open and close. All day long. Hello, Red Mechanical. I hope we didn't keep you waiting there too long. Come on board, take a seat. The thing I love best about travelling around on a bus is looking out of the big windows and spotting things. There's lots of different shaped road signs around. This one is square. This one is a circle. And this one is a triangle. This one's very important because it tells vehicles to slow down because there might be children around. Hello, Blue Mechanical. We've had to stop at a traffic light because it's on red. There's three different traffic light colours. Red, amber and green. The red light means stop. The amber light means the signal is about to change. And green means go, go, go. This bus is very smooth and very quiet because it runs on electricity. That means it's even better for the environment than other buses. It's green mechanical. Hello. Right, I think that's everyone now. Let's head back to the garage. Can you remember all of the shapes we've learnt today? Rectangle Circle Square And Triangle Thanks very much to Mary and all the team at Ariba for taking us on this amazing bus journey today. What do you say, Mechanicals? That's thank you. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! Gecko here! Guess what? I've got a fun day ahead for us! And it's all to do with trucks! Have you ever wondered how all those roads and pavements and even the school playground gets made? Me too! After all, we stand on it, play games on it, 
and I've even scraped my knees on it. Ouch, did that hurt. But how does it all get there? Well, today we're going to find out a little bit more about that. And it all starts with trucks. So I'm here at the Tarmac Quarry to meet some of those very special trucks today. And not just any old truck, oh no! Tipping and non-tipping trucks. But what is a tipping and non-tipping truck anyway? Let's go and find out together why these trucks are so amazing at tipping and travelling and pushing and paving. Look! Here comes a tipping truck right now! Can you see it? Wowzers! Look how big it is up close! There are lots of different size tipping and non-tipping trucks. Look! There's three different sizes here. And because of that, they all have different amounts of wheels. There's loads of wheels on this truck. How many wheels can you see? Now we're ready to go into the quarry and see these tipping trucks in action. But what is a quarry? Well, a quarry is like a really big hole in the ground. And in this quarry, they have lots of special materials that can be used to help make things. How cool is that? So here we are at the quarry, where a digger's waiting to drop stone into the back of it. Stone can be heated up and added to a glue type material called bitumen to make asphalt. The digger scoops from this huge pile of stone and then pours it into the back of the truck where there's plenty of space. Once the truck is full, it's time to transport the stone to another part of the quarry. The stones can be used in concrete for buildings or as asphalt for roads. Now, here comes my favourite part. Tipping! Yay! Here we go! The truck reverses into position. Then the driver presses a button, which makes the roof of the trailer open up. Now, the trailer slowly starts to tip upright. And... Wow! Look at that! It's made a huge mess on the ground. Hey gang, remember the 16-wheeler from before? Well, guess what? Even that tips. The tipper body is nearly 11 metres long. And look how high it goes. I bet that's taller than a giraffe. Now that the stone has been dropped off, a digger comes along to clean up and push the material into a nice neat pile, out of the way of moving trucks. Bet Danny the digger would love to meet him. Now. Here's a secret for you. See that truck there? Well, and this is just for us to know, that truck isn't a tipping truck at all. Honest, it's actually a non-tipping truck. Isn't that amazing? Now, I bet you're thinking, no, Gecko, those trucks look just the same. Well, here's why they aren't. See? Instead of raising the tipper body into the air, this truck has a moving floor. I know, a moving floor. How fun is that? That then pushes the material out of the truck. Non-tipping trucks are used when there might be height limits in the area. Tipping and non-tipping trucks not only transport materials to different places of the quarry, but also onto roads and other sites. Before they do, the truck has to be weighed. Do you know why? I'll tell you 
It's so that the truck is safe to drive on public roads. Just like the roads your mum and dad drive you to school on. So, the truck parks up under these scales and the driver presses this button to calculate how much material he's got in the back. Phew! It looks like we're a safe weight and now we're ready to hit the roads. Come on everyone, let's follow him and see where he goes. These workmen are working through the night to pave new roads. And this non-tipping truck has come along to give them the materials they need. The truck backs up onto this paver and pushes asphalt into it, which is the crushed stone from earlier, all heated up. The paver then flattens this onto the ground and a road roller comes along to smooth it into a road. Hmm. Now I don't know about you, but I need to see all that again. So, the asphalt is transported to the paver. Whoa! The paver flattens and presses this onto the ground. Double whoa! The road roller smooths it out even further. And then look at that. Now we have a road. That's amazing. Wait a second. Is that... Yes, it's a tipping truck. It's here to help out. And there we have it. A nice new paved road. Well, I don't know about you, but I've had a great time at the tarmac quarry today. We got to learn all about tipping and non-tipping trucks. And even saw them paving roads. Now, when you play in the playground, you can tell everyone all about the trucks that help make the floor. I'm off now to tell my vehicle friends all about this. Until next time everyone, it's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Have you ever wondered how big trucks get cleaned? Well, we're about to find out. I'm here at a giant truck wash. These trucks drive for miles and miles, delivering important things all over the country, which means they also get very dirty. This truck wash is so popular that there's a queue of muddy trucks all waiting to get cleaned. And it can clean all sorts of different trucks. Big lorries, gas tankers, even car transporters. The trucks start by driving into the truck wash very carefully and stop once they're fully inside. The cleaning team begin by spraying special soapy water over the whole truck. This soap gets to work straight away loosening all of that grease and grime. If the dirt is really bad or difficult to reach, the team will use long brushes to get to these hard to reach places. Then it's time to turn on the rollers. This huge machine is controlled from these switches here. The cleaning team select what sort of truck is in the wash so that the rollers can clean the right places on the vehicle. There's three rollers in total two that clean each side of the truck and one that cleans the front, the top and the back. The soft rollers wipe all of the muck away and the spray nozzles rinse the truck clean. The huge machine that carries the rollers moves forwards and backwards along the truck on rails, just like a train would.
This truck wash is very special too. The dirty water goes down the drain and is magically turned into clean water in this pump room. That means that most of the dirty water is recycled and no water is wasted. If there's any bits that the machine has missed, it's time for the cleaning team to use some super powerful jets to blast off that stubborn dirt. Look at that! This lorry's as good as new, clean and sparkling. Good job, team! See you again soon! Bye! If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!